-hmm. Welcome everyone to the Township, uh, the Lampa Township Committee meeting for November 8th, 2021. This is being held via Zoom remote access, normally held at the Delanco Township Municipal Building, 770 Cooperstown Road in Delanco, New Jersey. Uh, roll call please, Mrs. Lohr. Mr. Brown. Here. Mrs. Patrick. Kate is muted. Still muted. I'm off. There you go. There you go. Here. Okay. Right here. Ms. Holland. I'm here. Mr. Lett. Here. Mr. Templeton. Here. Thank you. Also present, Mr. Schwab, our township administrator, Mr. Fox, our township engineer, Mr. Steve Raymond, who's uh, sitting in for Mr. Doug Heinhold this evening, our solicitor, Mrs. Lohr, municipal clerk. Um, I don't see Mrs. Martin. She's on vacation. Well deserved. And Mr. Fenimore, are you out there somewhere? Yeah, he's there. He is, he, he is uh, logged in. All right, very good. Mr. Fenimore is online. Uh, Chief Jesse DeSanto is here. And anyone that I miss? Very good. Uh, flag salute, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty, and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, Sunshine State, Mrs. Lord. Please be advised that proper notice of this meeting has been given in compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act in the following manner. Written notice has been mailed to the Burlington County Times and Courier Post and published in the January 5th, 2021 editions. Written notice has been posted on the official bulletin board of the Township of Delanco at least 48 hours prior to the meeting. This meeting is via a Zoom remote platform and the um, Meeting ID and passcode have been published on the agenda as well as on our website. And advanced comments uh, for this meeting are accepted up to six hours prior to the commencement of the published public meeting start time and will be read um, at the appropriate time when the meeting is open to the public. And members of the public who wish to make comments or have questions during the meeting public comment sessions may either make their comments or questions via audio option or by typing their comment or question via the Zoom platform chat option. The chat option will be disabled during the regular session of the meeting and will be opened pri just prior to the public comment sessions. The agenda for this meeting has been available on the uh, township website at delancotownship.com. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, at this point, the uh, meeting's open to the public, uh, the first of two public comment sessions. Uh, as a standard procedure, please state your name and address and, uh, or, and the chat function will be open at this time. And uh, the chat function will be closed at the end of each public comment uh, session. So uh, any comments during this uh, first public comment session? I received for the record, I did not receive any uh, comments or questions in advance. I do have one um, uh, piece of correspondence that'll be entered during the uh, correspondence. And I'm gonna ask Erin if uh, she has uh, enabled the chat. I'm still seeing it disabled. Uh, yeah, the chat is disabled. Okay. Is that what your question was? Yeah. yeah. Yes, we are in a public comment session. Yeah. Oh, my apologies, hang on. Gotcha, you're all set. The chat is now enabled. So anyone that uh, wishes to uh, type in their comments or questions um, where they do not have audio or, um, or visual available, they can do so now as the chat function has been enabled. So I guess we should just give a few um, seconds to uh, give people opportunity to type something in. Uh, and if anyone from the public at this time that wants to do it via the um, audio, um, please state your name and address for the record and just make sure that you do unmute yourself. Mayor, I don't see anybody uh, typing into the chat function All right. at this time. All right, well, um, 
We'll close this first session for the public comment at this time. Comments and reports, professionals. Um, let's see, we'll start with uh, Mr. Raymond, because I think Mr. Fox has quite a bit to go over. So we'll start with, sure. with you, um, sir. I really don't have much. Uh, I, I did um, send over a, a draft of the amended uh, parks ordinance this afternoon after uh, Doug and I put that work together, put that together, and he asked me to send it out to to you. It just uh, the the only, the only change from the last time is from the discussion from last month regarding cooking and grilling in the in the parks. We added a, a section to prohibit that, uh, but but accepted out the um, the township itself. Um, the recognized youth sports uh, club, and as well as uh, Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts. Um, so that's uh, you know for for your review, and uh, and other than that, I don't have anything at this at this time. Uh, we do have that as a discussion item at the end, so we'll uh, we'll ponder that. And for those that may not have been able to to see it. Uh, you'd be able to, to look at it as we proceed through the rest of the meeting and come up with any questions during the discussion period. Uh, Mr. Fox, you're up to bat. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, I do have quite a few items. <clears throat> uh, first off, um, the uh, High Point development, um, the last house has been granted a CO. Um, the, so the developer will be looking for release of a bond, but he's going to have to do some punchless work before before we recommend release of any bonds for him. Um, there has been a lot of discussion, just so everyone knows, about um, curbing being installed on Newton's Landing Boulevard, which is the back of the lots from High Point. Um, the plans um, that were approved do not show curb going in there. Uh, the, the, the original plans from High from Newton's Landing did not show curb. Um, and the new the, the uh, new development for High Point uh, did not show curb there as well. Um, so there's no way to make the developer install curb on those on that area. If the residents want curb there, they would have to go to the HOA and they could apply for a road opening permit to the township. And they can if the permit was granted, they can install curb on their own. Um, but there's no way we can we can make it the developer do do that work. Um, Harry, I have a question regarding that issue. Um, sure. I talked to John Raincamp um, about that issue because Kitty had um, thought that the reason why there was no curb there initially was because that was going to be a commercial um, plot there for various stores and that would have been a parking area. So maybe that's why the... It, the initial plan didn't have it. John, John told me that it had to do with some kind of a swale there for water, for the actual runoff. And um, I don't know that that would be a problem if they would put a curb in. And, um, and the other issue is who's actually mowing that little stretch there and those trees, do they belong to the township or? Because nobody seems to be able to tell me who owns that stretch of land where the trees are. There's, you know, the tree path is on that side as well. Right. The the, the um, HOA would be responsible for for maintaining that. Okay. Um. And and yeah, it's possible that 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 there is a swale in the backyards, and it is possible that that's why the the curb was not proposed. Um. It it, it could be put in. You know. Um. If if we didn't, it would have to be designed to make sure it, okay. it, it, it drains. But I believe curb could be put in there. Um, it was properly designed. Okay, great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, the twenty twenty one road program, uh, the DOT and and local aid portion uh, that work has been completed. Um, there is punchless work that needs to be done. Um, there's some minor ponding out there that we're having the contractor look at, um, and. Uh, as uh, Mr. Bartlett brought up, I believe that uh, at least he brought up to me, um, there was a couple driveways that the uh, depressed curve was a little high. Um, the requirement is an inch and a half, and, and these are, there's a couple of them that are about two and a half inches. So we're looking at that to see how we can address those. Um, along with that, with the uh, tree issue um, on Walnut and Third, 
Uh, I am holding, uh, I don't want to get too much into it at this point. I don't know that it's appropriate, but I am holding um, over $25,000 of the contractor's money until this gets resolved. Um, but I think if we talk further about it, it should be in an executive session. Um, the uh, popular Maricocas outfall, I delivered the, uh, I dug prepared the easement, Doug's office prepared the uh, easement documents, and I delivered them to Mr. McQuaid, the uh, homeowner, or the homeowner's son. Um, and he is reviewing them with his father and is going to get, get back to us as soon as possible on, on those documents. Um, the Coopertown sidewalk project, um, it, the Coopertown Road, which is in front of Town Hall and Public Works, the design is done. I submitted them to the county for their preliminary review. Um, what my plan is, because to get permits from the county is, is going to take months. That's just the way they work. So what I'm, I'm trying to get their blessing on it. We can go out to bid, award it, and then have the contractor obtain the permits and, and do the work actually in the spring. Um, if we run a good weather, he may be able to get done before spring, but realistically, it wouldn't get done until the spring. But we can put it out to bid and receive the bids, uh, and I'd like to award those on December 6th. Um, can you drop off plans to my office, please? Sure, yeah, we'll see. Yep. Um, I, I will have Alex do that. I'm I'm away this week, but I'll have Alex drop them. Okay. Okay. It's a um, long day for Harry tonight. Pardon me. My, sorry. It's a long drive for yeah. Harry tonight. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, Just so you so you know, we we need to make that award before the end of the year. It's used money that we put in the operating portion of our budget, and if we don't make the award by the end of the year, then we may have some problems. With having to reallocate it out of next year's budget and delays the whole thing so uh we got the money to pay for it in august i'm a little disturbed that we're not uh awarded already so we've got to get this thing out and awarded asap yep well done um with that the, the cooper street portion um that's the date uh the cdbg grant money um mm -hmm. we'll be putting that out in the spring that doesn't have to be done until uh, 2022, the end of 2022. Um, and, I, and I think how the timing will work out might work out nice for us if we award the town hall section now, that contractor can bid on the, the Cooper Street portion because uh, he's going to be in town anyway. And he knows, already knows he has the contract. So he should be able to bid cheaper on that portion. So it may work out. Yeah, the time might work out well on that. Um, so yeah, 200 Ash Street, that's on our discussion item, so that'll be later. Um, we have our Zubrook Seawall um, proposal. I don't know if you want to discuss that now or, or it's under. Yeah, that's for now. If you remember uh, what I sent out, we, we've we been talking last uh, month after we met with DEP and gotten there. Uh, blessing to uh, plan for replacing the seawall at the old uh, location. And the question becomes timing. Uh, Harry put together uh, their proposal for the engineering work. We canceled some uh, old ordinances so we had the down payment money. And the question is, do we want to be in a position to have the engineer start the permit application work now versus wait till you've adopted the 2022 budget and we set aside money uh, based on that, which could be in the spring. And secondary, that's about $25,000, $30,000 worth of work. But the other question is, do we want them also to be in a position to, assuming that they get the permits, uh, have the specs ready to go out to bids in the summer, because based on what we learned from the last seawall work, the work has to be done in September, October because of the spawning season on the river. And so therefore, you, if we don't get something awarded in the summer, we'll have to wait another calendar year. So if you want to make that uh, decision, it's a half million, $600,000 overall project. Uh, you can tell me to put on the agenda for your next meeting, $100,000 uh, bond issue, 
which will be the first part of it. And that's for what's called preliminary engineering. And then if we're ready to go next spring, then we'll do the other uh, balance of the, the funding based on uh, budget. So the question is whether you want to try to fund this year the uh, engineering work, either all or part, and get moving on it, or just wait and have this discussion as part of the 2022 budget. Harry's letter of November 2nd, which outlines his proposal for this, is part of your agenda packet. I Any questions or comments? Yeah. Yeah, I would suggest that we um, at least apply for the permit because that could be a lengthy process and not put that off until next year. And um, I think it's the first part, like 30,000, I think. Right. Be, that's what I would think we should move forward with. Okay. If we don't authorize the rest and we do get the permit, then more than likely any seawall work would be not be able to be done until 2023 because we won't be ready to get out to bids. That's the only risk that you have uh, if you don't have it together. I, I agree, Kate, that that makes some sense. If it wasn't for that timing, I would tend to agree with you there. So if we don't use it though, it just goes back to the surplus? If, it, if you don't use it, you cancel it. We're not gonna borrow the money actually. This is just the authorization. And so if you have a capital improvement authorization, then you can award the uh, work. You can't award it without that authorization. We don't borrow the money. So whatever we don't use, if you decide not to do it, you just borrow the amount that's needed to pay what you've done. And you don't borrow the whole 100,000, you borrow the 30 or whatever, if we decide to abandon the project or postpone it otherwise. So there's no downside though to- I don't see a downside to the 100,000 versus the 30,000 other than you're losing, uh, you have to put 5% down. so. You know, it's a couple thousand dollars extra, but we in cash, but that cash is that's the first thing you spend when you pay the bills. So whether you put thirty five hundred or five thousand, you know, I'm sorry, 1500 versus five thousand, uh, you know, that money's either going to be if you don't spend it all, you get that back okay. in a future budget. I'm in favor of putting that forward. I mean, there it seems silly if we've come this far and we're this close to having like serious momentum from the DEP, there's no reason not to move forward. Well, I, have to, I have to agree with that. Don't we uh, have that, that in our capital? Lost. Don't we have that in our capital? I'm sorry. I didn't hear you, Fern. I was saying something. I'm sorry, Kate. Um, what I was saying was that we've lost so much of the earth there at the waterfront already and uh, the delays of uh, the folks up in Trenton uh, that we need to put a stop to that as quickly as we can uh, to get the seawall back in place uh, and not delay it in, you know, another year or two years down the road. Because eventually we're gonna end up uh, losing that waterfront and end up at uh, Delaware Avenue, uh, losing the trees and the things that are already there uh, and in my opinion, that uh, and I think that we want to uh, retain as much or get it back to where it should be uh, so that future generations can use that land uh, for the park that we've intended it to be. So the, again, I, I would not delay uh, pushing it off another year. If we have, we're able to make the numbers work and uh, get it done in 2022 uh, and get the things rolling. I, I think we put in a rest to the uh, soil erosion there. That would be my position. Um, I understand that, but what, um, what would hold us up? First, we need the permit, so we can't do anything until we get the permit. So I don't understand if we just went that far, what would hold us up another year or two, Richard? We already have the funding in place, don't we? No, though this is the only this is the question. The proposal is to put the funding in place for the full engineering work, not the construction work, but the engineering work to ensure that the bids are ready to the specs are done and ready to go out to bids by the spring. If you authorize the funding for the engineering work, all of it now 
if you decide after he gets the permit that we and he's given an estimate for the construction work and things people change your mind you stop at that point if we only authorize 30,000 now then we have to do a whole new ordinance to authorize the balance of it to have them continue working uh, okay. and so it's just two separate ordinances and it could delay things a little bit and so I you do take the risk of not being ready that's okay. the only thing I'm concerned about I get nervous about that yeah, then then I'm on board with moving forward with the, the whole amount there. I, I didn't think it made a difference, to tell you the truth, because it could take six months to get the permit. Yeah, if the permit gets delayed, then the project does get delayed. There's no question that regardless of how much money you appropriate, we end up losing a year. But with fingers crossed that we get the permit in time. In the meantime, by the way, if you then, if next week, uh, next meeting you uh, introduce the bond ordinance and you approve the engineering because the funding will be there based on it uh, they then would be authorized to go all the way to the point of having the specs ready to go out to bids if they want to move forward on that so that they're ready to go the minute the pit permit is issued harry i don't know if that makes any sense or whether you don't spend a minute on doing any of the bid and spec portion until you actually get a permit in hand i'm not sure what your feeling is on that yeah, it kind of all goes hand in hand. Um, the, the the only thing really that you could say would be the, uh, in my opinion, is the inspection um, cost, because that wouldn't be coming in until you actually do the work. So you could authorize everything but the inspection cost, and then you're all set to go. Um, yeah, the administration of going out to bid is a very small part of it. So either, so what you're saying, Harry, is you'd, a, you'd actually be putting together the bids and specs simultaneously with making the permit application and getting all those approvals from the various agencies? Basically, yes. Okay. That way yeah. it's ready to go. If they say, if they deny it, we've got a spec ready to go for the time when we finally get it, I think. Eventually you're gonna get it. There's nothing wrong with having plans ready to go on the shelf. Right. For something this important. Right. Do you want any kind of uh, committee action on this right now? Or No, I just want to make sure, John, Mike, I haven't heard from you guys. If you're okay, because we got to put together, in the next week I'll put together the ordinance and we have to, uh, you know, the amended debt statements and we have to have everything ready for you to introduce on the 22nd. Then you'll adopt at the meeting in December and we'll get this all going. If, if, you, know, if you weren't planning on supporting it, then it's not it's a lot of effort for nothing. My, my opinion is... Um, I just was a little bit taken back on the estimate uh, for the proposal for the engineering. That seemed like a lot of money and I didn't really have time to digest it or, I mean, I read the proposal and I saw all the different sections, but um, $72,000 to replace earth at the end of the water just seems um, a little perplexing to me. And I just wondered if anybody else felt that way or if anybody wanted to question the engineering fees. Uh, it's nothing personal, Harry. It just seems like a lot of money for that uh, stretch of land. That's my only drawback. Well, will that count the the lands that were supposed to, uh, I guess, remove so that water can displace that area? Um, yes, that's included, yes. Okay, so it is at least researching that and it, exactly. Yeah. The, the, the permit process, as we all know, with the EP is, is pretty intense um, for this. Um, and then it's the design of a seawall. There's going to be two different types of seawalls probably there, vinyl on one portion, maybe steel or gabions on another portion. Um, you know, that's the, the time it takes. How many linear feet is that? It'll be a total of uh, about 500 feet because we're actually doing the 400 of the, of the front, the zimbabwe frontage. We're doing, we're, we're jutting in at the end of Willow, at reinforcing Willow Street. Uh, and also this also includes redoing the boat ramp and rip wrapping and, and armorizing the, the boat ramp area. Um, so what did that mean armorizing, yeah. Harry? I read that. What does armorizing the boat ramp mean? Probably going to be riprap, large stones, protection. It, it'll be protected by either large stones or depending on how we do it, we may do a portion of it coming out with a seawall and then riprap, large stones. 
but it, it's protection. So it doesn't wash away like it's been doing all these years. Harry, will the emergency vehicles still be able to use that ramp uh, once you do that work? Union? When it's, when it's done, absolutely. Yeah, that's the, the, the purpose of it. During the work, um, probably not. Um, there'll be a portion of time where the ramp will not be able to be used. Wouldn't be very long, I would say probably a couple of weeks, but. But afterwards there'll be a dock that people can use or at least a, an entry that people can safely use? Uh, no, it'll just be the ramp. The, 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 it'll be the width of the road um, and it'll go out probably about another 100 feet okay. uh, in concrete. And then it'll have, like I said, either, either it'll have some type of, of protection on, on the sides of it. Um, so the boats can go in and it doesn't wash away. And, but, but no, they, they won't allow a dock or, or anything like that. But well, no, because it's just for emergency vehicles. Yeah, correct. Okay. Richard, can you tell me this, if we approve going forward here, th this money is not in this budget, is it? This engineering and permitting no that's why we're talking about it tonight we would introduce a funding ordinance at the next meeting in order to the ordinance or a temporary uh, it's, uh, it's a bond bond ordinance bond anticipation notes like anything else so it's a bond ordinance for normally the you do a bond ordinance that'll be for the construction portion but you're allowed to use that methodology for what's called preliminary engineering which is what this is then once you're ready to roll and you'll have a construction estimate, then you'll do another bond ordinance for the actual construction work. So you're correct. The reason that we have to take this step is because it is, there is no funding for it. And in order to fund it, you need to put 5% down payment in cash. We didn't have that until last meeting when we had you cancel unused prior year capital ordinances that had cash in them. So now that cash is available for this particular purpose uh, to do now. You could wait and do it in the part of the 2022 budget process do, do we like have, everything else. Do we have funds in a, a set aside for the construction of the seawall, Zerbro? No, no, that would have to be appropriated in 2022. I thought that was always in our pot of soup in our wish. No, it was not. The only seawall work was for those ends that we okay. finished. That's okay. Now I remember. Yeah. And then there was, we, we received county money for the park behind the seawall, but because we couldn't build the seawall first, that was reprogrammed. So once the seawall is done, now you have to deal with what's going to be behind the seawall. And that'll be a whole separate issue you'll discuss probably with the county to reallocate some open space funds or use your own funds. Uh, this is the just to do as Fern was saying, to get something there to stop the erosion and give you the ability to do something that you want to in the future, how long it takes and what that'll cost will be a future decision. Well, Fern had suggested at the last meeting and uh, I, I won't be around for the next budget, but the uh, field of dreams and that maintenance um, of that field, those funds being taken from the open space tax, you know, perhaps it is time to to convey that out of there and use the open space tax for rebuilding of the Zerbrook Park. Um, because you had said, you just said a couple, five, six hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. Estimate, Richard, that's a, that's a lot of money. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah, it's, uh, it's a policy question. And as I said, the, the key thing right now is only to get the permit and be ready to go for construction if. You're ready to go. It may be that you won't be ready to go. It may be too much. There may be the issues that you talked about with the uh, Field of Dreams maintenance money, where that comes out of, and so on. Excellent uh, budget items. And normally we'd say, well, let's resolve all that and then we'll talk about this. Uh, if we hadn't been pressing so hard to get DEP to consent, and there seems to be this is the opportunity say, well, you know, it's just a routine kind of thing, but it hasn't been routine getting this permit. And so the hope is let's, you know, strike while the iron's hot or whatever the expression is. Is that it? No, it's not it. No, but it no, makes sense. Not. 
I can't, I can't think which I missed. I mixed up two expressions. Sorry about that. That's all right. But I think you got my point. So we're all in agreement with uh, Mr. Fox's proposal as it is, correct? Well, I, let me just point out to John's question, we're not asking for approval of his proposal. We're using his proposal to determine how much funds to set aside for this initial preliminary engineering. And I'm suggesting a number greater than his proposal, just as we may need money to pay DP for permits, although they're holding 4,000 of our money. We know we're gonna spend ultimately more. So if, if you add more to it, you've already got a base in there. So my suggestion was that for ease of calculation, we pick an arbitrary number. We could pick 75,000, we could pick 100. I was gonna just take 100. We have 5,000 that we can use, the 5% down payment, get the funding there. And then, then you make the decision after you've all read carefully that proposal by the engineer that John asked questions about, and you can say yes or no on that independently of the funding. But without the funding, you can't say yes. Richard, I thought that that uh, initial permit fee that we paid them so many years ago, I thought Harry transferred that to the street end permit. That's what we thought, but they can, we were walking around there and one of the people at the mm -hmm. meeting said, guess what, we still have your money there. So we must wow, have I thought they transferred it. Yeah. So we didn't pay for for a permit for the other, uh, for the street Yeah, we ends? did. We paid the permits for the street ends. Yes, we did. Okay. All right. It's not a huge, huge dollar amount, but no, it's not. There's, there's a whole bunch of these permits, and I never know every time we do these, all of a sudden I get something that says, please sign here and send in your check. So uh, we just want to make sure we're covered. And as I told Christine, whatever you don't use, you can cancel. Right. So your risk is $5,000 of money that was canceled from a four-year-old ordinance. So it's not new money. Uh, so that's why this allows us to move this along without investing new money. During the 2022 budget discussions, you'll decide on new money that you might set aside you know, for the actual construction work. And that'll be a big chunk in the capital improvement fund uh, that you'll be discussing every year. So you, know, you can't do one without the other, but question whether you want to make this investment initially. All right, Harry, Great. continue. All right, I have that on the next agenda. Okay. Um, the, uh, uh, as Richard sent out a uh, email, the public service uh, gas is replacing gas mains. Uh, the plan is to replace gas mains up in the northern portion of town. Um, up in near Princeton, Colgate, West Avenue, um, Kansas, that area. Um, we did have a Zoom meeting with them. They are they're, they're planning on doing the mains this year. Then they'll they'll base course it at this point. Then they'll come back in the spring and do the, the service connections, each connection to each house. And they will, um, at a minimum, they will have to mill and overlay a half a roadway. Where they, where they put in their mains. If there's a lot of openings on both sides of the main, they'll, they'll do the whole roadway. And we can also do, if you recall, like we did with the water company, they will transfer. We could not do half of a roadway on one and do a full roadway on another one. So we, we can, as long as the square footage comes out basically the same, they have no problem with what we paid. Um, yeah, one They're of the planning. things I wrote to Harry that does is <laughs> means that for the 2022 local road program, we need to concentrate on roads in that area because if there's going to be a trade off, it's probably going to be trade off in that area. Because if every one of those roads has got trenches, they all have to be done curb to curb, either they do it or we do it. So that will have an impact on uh, the plan for the 2022 road program. Yep, we can, we, we'll definitely look at that. You, you, John and I can get together and, and go over that. All right. So, but, so that's where all the work's going to be done. The, the local money and the PSEG money, there'll be state aid money, which we'll, we re got a letter on that'll be elsewhere. Right. West Avenue should definitely be considered because there's a yeah, lot of issues well, there. So yeah. I hope that's one of the number one issues that John brings up. Yeah, Harry. I have a feeling it is from what I saw. Yeah, because I we, 
we met out but, there several times with those West Avenue, Illinois, you know, you got a couple over there that are, could be part of that. We'll have to see. A lot depends on where PSE and G, well, how they leave the road. Correct. And that'll make that decision, but it does mean we got to work in that area. Okay. Gary, do they have a pre-construction meeting yet? Have they followed up on that since? And they, they have not. Um, see, no, nothing. I didn't, haven't heard any either. They were in such a hurry, they're ready to start the next week. But yeah. we're, I mean, we're a small portion of their overall thing. So maybe that was, there may be other towns that are giving more problems, but. Uh, yeah, they're doing almost the entire town of Beverly um, yeah. and, and and a lot of Edgewater Park. So yeah, right. I, I have not heard and I, I'll touch base with them to see uh, what, what their plan is. Okay. Um, also, we have um, in, in your packets our proposal for, and Janice can, can help out on this if, if need be, um, the HVAC system, um, as I believe you all know, there's some issues with that. To get access to the equipment, the access panels are too small. Um, you, you can't get anything in or out of, of those existing panels. So they would have to be widened uh, to be able to get no equipment in and, and the old equipment out. Um, so we, we did provide a proposal to, to do that. Luckily, how they built the building is they they had a large enough opening to get the equipment up there, then they boxed it in. So the roof trusses won't be affected. Um, so what we basically have to do now is just unbox what they boxed in to put in the smaller uh, access panel. Um, so it's, you know, it, it, it's, it's the best situation we could have had. It's not, a, it won't be an extensive amount of work and, and it's very little structural issues at all with it. Yeah. Harry. Harry's cost 3000, which we can do in our operating budget. So just for your information, sorry for. Oh, Harry, this 3000 for this one unit because these other units are of the same age. We have what, three or four other units up in the in the uh, yeah. attic over there. Yeah, total five, uh, yeah. Are, so is it gonna cost us $3,000 each time or is this one opening gonna be able to handle uh, a few of the other exchanges of these other units? Yeah, it's, it, it's actually for two openings. Um, there's two portions of the building that have separate access and separate areas where the units are. So there are two openings now one in the police station and one in the archive file room uh they will both get done on, on, on our engineering end for the three thousand dollars we will do the design and put that out to bid for for both of those openings yeah remember this is just for the engineering then we'll actually yeah. construction's a whole other business based based on his engineering and drawings and so on they get pricing and then we'll get bids from contractors to do the openings and then on top of that, we we just received the proposals, the initial proposals from our HVAC guy for anywhere between thirteen and twenty thousand dollars for the single unit, either to repair or replace it. So it's first thing we have to do is make sure we can get in there, and so that's Harry's job first, and then find out what that'll cost, and then decide what we're. But in the meantime, we need to order the replacement units. So I'll be Janice, and I'll be back with you on those recommendations. Uh, Rich? Yeah. Richard, uh, so on this one proposal that we have, do we uh, need to go out for two other proposals or get other bids on good question. replacing those units? It's a good question. That was my first reaction when I saw the dollar amount. Yeah. It, may, it may be that uh, for the repair one, to replace the heat exchanger in one unit is a maintenance item emergency maintenance item, a lot depends on how fast, if they're both the same time frame, then it probably doesn't make any difference. My gut feeling is that if we replace the heat exchanger only, that's a maintenance item and we need to verify that that's a reasonable price and it's under the bid limit. If we have to replace the whole unit, it's over the bid limit and we would probably, there's probably more than one train dealer that we would get prices on. So uh, that's, the, that's the difference. We want our guy to do it. And a lot depends, maybe if he can get the heat exchanger faster than a whole unit, uh, this stuff's coming from overseas. So it's probably sitting in some harbor somewhere uh, rather than in stock in the United States. So 
we will follow up on that and have that for you in the next meeting. Okay. Well, sadly, uh, if we just change out the, ex uh, the heat exchanger, you know, we may end up having to put band-aids on or replace other parts of that unit being it's what, uh, 15 years old? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's just, uh, you know. Yeah. I, I think one of the key things we're gonna look at for our 2022 budget keeps building up is just like we have a plan to replace computers and trucks over time, we need to have a plan to replace the five units up there, perhaps two a year for the next two and a half years. And in which case then you do do bidding on that and do a, a plan, use it as a capital item. Uh, but the, the number one thing is we've got it without the larger holes in the ceiling, we can't do anything in the meantime. If it gets uh, cold, the little electric heaters on everybody's desks will, they're going to spend most of the winter that way anyhow, unfortunately, because regardless, we're, it's going to be January before we get the new unit in. Maybe. <laughs> Thank Maybe. you. Yeah. Yeah. One one thing to consider. Um, this could be considered an uh, emergency contract. Uh, we do not. The one heater is shut down, and do not have heat in the uh, one zone, which uh, services the front uh, administration side, as well as the sergeant's office and the police secretary's office. And OSHA requires that we maintain a minimum heat uh, a temperature of sixty. I believe it's sixty four degrees for a safe work environment. We are entering into the winter months. Um, so this could be considered, an, uh, I believe, an emergency uh, purchase. And we could probably um, not have to worry about going out to bid or getting a second quote um, under those provisions of the New Jersey statute. Um, the one thing um, in talking with Dave for, uh, further on this, one thing he did to say, maybe Harry, is um, He's, he said that when we are um, going and designing, when you're designing the openings, the enlarged, enlarging openings, to actually size them for the AC units, which are three times the size of the heaters, <laughs> because the, he said those AC units will eventually go too. Um, so that's one thing to consider. Um, that's our only way to get uh, this equipment uh, into uh, the attics. That's where everything is. And so he did recommend that, that we um, size it for the AC units, not just the heaters. He said the AC units are much bigger than the heaters. Um, so I just wanted to, uh, and the other thing he was saying is talking about is the two proposals. He said, there's pros and cons to each. Of course, the, the, uh, the full heat, the complete replacement is certainly more expensive. He said, these units usually last um, 10 to 12 years. We're on year 17 uh, going into 18. Yeah. And, um, also, too, he said, so he goes, while the one is more expensive, it's the whole unit, whereas for like you touched on, he said, he said he can't guarantee we replace, we do the heat exchanger, which is basically the furnace part, and then maybe in a, uh, in a couple months, you know, the igniter goes, then the blower goes, and he said that's, these are all the factors, because the, these, all five of these, these units are beyond their uh, um, estimated useful life or, you know, um, for for these type of units, so just something to consider when you make your decisions. Is it, uh, is it was it just a review? It was a twelve thousand versus nineteen thousand, approximately. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so seven thousand. It's it's, right. it's a no brainer, really. Why would you band aid it versus replace it? It's a public building. You got to do it. By the way, right. I didn't design that opening up there, so don't blame me. <laughs> And, and that wouldn't be. That's why you're leaving, John. <laughs> <laughs> He's running away. And that would. And we went into the roof. No, I'm okay. Right. I don't. That's beyond me. I'm. It's the first I'm hearing they're up in the attic. Who does that? Yeah, well, it, if if it wasn't up in the attic, there'd be other costs initially yeah. in the building. There'd be other issues being outside. Yeah, but uh, or in basements. That was to avoid having a basement. You know, a basement to put a boiler in. Yeah. Chris, All right. Go ahead. Uh, well, two questions. One was just how come we didn't go the, the rooftop unit route, but two was that wouldn't be subject to change order, right? Like he's he would be holding that price in light of the fact that everything in the world is back ordered and inflated costs at the moment, 
right? Like this is his cost to do it. Yeah. Moving. Yes. Forward. As long as we don't sit on it, when, uh, especially if it's going to be done as uh, emergency contract where we mm -hmm. don't have to adhere to the um, quote and bidding laws, then you can't sit on it for months. You have to say, okay, we've got this emergency. We don't have a heater for one part of the building. Let's get this thing ordered. And he said there's about a, a seven to eight week um, lead time on just receiving the The quote itself is 30 days. So he reserves the right well, where, to change after 30 days. Where are they going to drop this down? Uh, where are they going to drop down this this furnace? I mean, is there, you can make a hole in the roof, but is there enough room for it to come down? And no, it's in the ceiling. Part? It's done on the ceiling. The ceiling. It, right, it's the ceiling. They'll enlarge the, the, the two hatches that we right, have right now would be right. enlarged. And then right, would bring it, they would bring in scissor, scissor lift. So it's it, actually the equipment will be, the scissor lift will be used to raise the equipment up and into the hatch through the enlarged hatches uh, instead of drop down through the roof. How are you getting how are you getting the other ones out? Same way. Same way. Take the old oh, one no, down. Where, where are they going down the hallway, the main foyer? They'll, um, they'll, they'll, they'll be the scissor, they'll be scissor lift down. And maybe yeah. Harry, you can talk more, but like I said, where, uh, where though in the building? Where? The, archives what? room. The big the one we're talking about is the archives room. Oh, okay. Across from the bathroom. Well, I think I think actually the unit is on the police side that has to be replaced immediately. That's that's been shut oh, off. Oh, even though it handles the administrative. Yeah, it's on. Yeah. Have access to the police side. Oh. Maybe. Dave said it was on the police side. I was like, really? <laughs> so, okay. uh, and the reason that you We're keep using the building. two hatches is because if if you remember the way the um, foyer and the courtroom, those that roof design goes all the way up. So. It's two separate attics and that you cannot access one attic from the other. So we have two hatches on each side and there are units, um, both heaters, HVAC, your sprinkler system, um, you know, a whole bunch of stuff going up and uh, on in both of these attics. So, um, but- On the police side, I didn't realize it. Next time you talk with the contractor, get uh, some uh, perspective dimensional data of replacement units. So, the new opening yeah. gets sized for the maximum yeah. potential uh, unit. That, that's well, what that's, Harry to do. Yeah, that, yeah. that's right. But that, and that's one thing. I mean, we, you know, um, he, he said, Dave's, um, our HVAC contractor said, when, you, when you're sizing the, these openings, make sure you do it for the AC units. They are much larger than the. Than well, that's what I said. Ask him get get the raw you know specs okay. on what on the size sure. of those units in you know whatever it is inches, you know the maximum size. So the new opening that Harry designs and is built, you know we don't want to have a nice finished picture frame hole in the roof and then find out it's two inches too small. So. Absolutely, that that's part of our process. Um, if you approve the proposal. First thing I'll do is call Dave. Yes. Yeah. But I will. Christine makes a good point. As I said, we just got these today. I looked at them you know, 20 minutes ago. And we got to talk to Dave about whether or not these prices are guaranteed. If we use a purchase order at a particular point, are they guaranteed through the day they're delivered and installed? Or can he make the change because prices are rising in the supply chain? So I have to watch that very carefully. Thank you, Christine. Um, not a lot of fun when things go wrong. What's next? Well, we also have a proposal for um, this, the sprinkler unit also has to <laughs> possibly be tested with a, a more yeah. in-depth test. $1,400, we'll take a look at that and get back to them next week, whether the sprinkler system seems to have some slow leaks. We replaced a major leak, but there seems to be some pressure loss as the generator keeps, uh, compressor keeps coming on. Uh, the other thing Harry's supposed to talk about is the Field of Dreams well. Yeah, I had a couple more items. Uh, and okay, one go of ahead. Was, was the field. Like yep, the Field of Dreams well. Um, we have not heard, We, if you recall, we that was part of the uh, DCA uh, recreation grant that we applied for. Um, they still have not reviewed that, all the applications and uh, made any approvals to anyone for receiving the, the grant. 
they haven't even indicated when it's going to be done. Um, they received tons more than they thought they were going to receive applications, and they and, and they really kind of don't know what they're going to do about it. Um, so with, with that being said, we can either wait and see how that grant comes, um, or we can start the process of, of, of the new well. Um, for that, you're, you're looking at a ballpark of 100000 for for the well. Um, Which is already budgeted, by the way. We've approved yeah. the funding. The funding is there for it. Okay, so sure. funding uh, there. When did we approve $100,000? I thought we were talking about putting a Y at that well for $5,000. Where's the $100,000? Now that's in our capital program, John. It was in the bond ordinance that you adopted yeah. in the spring. To drill a new well for the Field of Dreams event loan? Yes, correct. I don't think we need to water that out there. You know, last time we discussed it, we got a ton of rain. It's supposed to be a natural event lawn. No, no, it's not for the event lawn. It's not it's, for the it's event for, lawn. It's for the, the playing field. It's not for the event lawn. It's for the playing field. Oh, oh you want a new well out there. Right, because there's the, the current well running all the time does not, not provide enough water to water all the fields for the amount of minutes that are needed uh, per day uh, to do that. It just doesn't have the capacity and Harry can report he looked at alternatives and we need a larger source of water so that one can do three of the field soccer fields and the other one can do the fourth soccer field and the softball field. Uh, and there'll be enough to make sure there's, so we don't end up with these brown brownouts we've had in this couple summers. It has nothing to do with a, the new field. Okay, uh, okay. Just be careful drilling. You take that water. It's got to got to come from somewhere. Yeah, Harry, you may be able to explain it better than I did. Yeah, it's it, it, it's it's all governed by um, uh, DEP, the well permitting. They they will look at it and determine whether there's enough uh, water there for the source, which there will be for the for this aquifer. Um, the existing well that we have out there now uh, just can't keep up with the fields. It's also getting up there in age. Um, so in order to, as Richard said, water all the fields efficiently, you really need a new well. Uh, it's, it'll be a larger well. Um, it will also be enough if ever in the future you did want to water the event lawns, it would be able to cover that as well. Um, but it's not for that reason at this time. It's, it's, it's for the existing field. So the question is whether we should Proceed, Harry. Did you give us a, an engineering proposal on that? I don't think so. I, I did not. I can get that to you for right. next meeting if you want. Whether we want to get that going, authorize them to get out to bid so that we have this well in place for next summer, or whether we want to wait and hope that we get the state money so we don't have to spend this money. It, well, I it's think not a big involved design um, you know, for, for the well. Uh, so I, I, I'll get the proposal and it's, it, 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 it won't be a lot. I don't think we should wait. Should we uh, put Harry, have Harry's proposal on your next agenda to authorize the engineering? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Let's go out and take a look at it. Yep. All right. Christine, Mike, Fern, John? Yes. Yes. You know, put on the please. agenda for the next meeting? Yes, yeah. please. Okay. All right. Okay. Will do. All we need. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, last thing is the uh, the EVC, um, the electric vehicle charging station ordinance. Uh, I did talk to Doug about that. Um, and the there's very little leeway that we have in the ordinance. And what we do have is basically planning type issues, screening and, and things like that. Um, I recommend it to Doug to have Michelle Taylor um, look at it and give her opinion on it because it's more of a planning issue that can that, that we have leeway in. There really is no um, leeway in, in the ordinance. So um, we're, we, we're referring that over to Michelle um, for, for her comments. And that was part of our joint land use board uh, quick discussion uh, at this last meeting uh, with Michelle. So there's more to come. Uh, 
Yeah, and I, I would like I said I would defer to her on, on that on that issue. And that's all I have. Wow. Okay. Any last questions of Harry before he goes out to the beach? Go to suntan at night. <laughs> it's always sunny in Florida. Yeah. Enjoy your vacation, Harry. Yeah, it's the first one in like three years and all right. It's only three days, it's but it's it's nice. Good. We'll quickly get to the 200 action discussion so that you can listen to that and get out of here, but uh, we'll get there. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, let's see. On to Township Administrator, Mr. Schwab. Thank you. Um, let you know a couple quick reports. Uh, we're scheduled to finally cut the Newton's Landing Basin, hopefully next week or this week. Uh, instead of waiting for the farmer that does both the basin and the county property and our basin. The county, because of the work on the trail, is very leery about having anything that might disturb it. And we can get to our basin through the end of Newton's Landing Boulevard and did not have to potentially disturb their trail. So they've given us permission to do it ourselves. So we have to, John has to nicely tell the farmer. So, and the county's not gonna do their part until the winter or even the spring. And we're already a year behind. So uh, we, the contractor who does Newton's Landing for their HOA, uh, John had him do some work in the basin prior years. He has equipment to cut some of those weeds that grow into trees at the end of the uh, outfall. And he also has the ability to properly cut the, uh, uh, the basin itself. And so for his price is equal to what we paid last year for his work plus the farmer's work. So I authorized them to proceed uh, I've been in touch with Vince from the HOA. They've been asking the timetable. So that's theoretically scheduled for this week. Uh, so we're doing that in the fall. Obviously, it's better to wait until the first frost, but it's not necessary. But uh, it turns out we did have a quick frost. We just don't want to do it in the spring. Uh, if you do it too early in the spring, it's too wet. If you do it too late in the spring, you've got too much animal activity. And so that's why we end up doing it in the fall. Let me um, let me jump in here while we're in this neighborhood. Uh, Harry, that that connector trail that I think um, Thor had access to rebuild the outfall there at Grand Cocos, uh, the the ruts and stuff. And I had sent an email around uh, to everybody about a month or so ago, just kind of uh, reminding that that section needed to get fixed. Uh, do you know anything on progress on that or? Yeah, it's actually used by by maintenance people. Um, the sewer did seed it. The ruts from the actual the in and out there are are still there. Yeah. Um, so uh, the county, if they had reconstructing that because it's all overgrown now, the the, the stone. The old trail that was there, yeah, um, and it's actually not located where people are walking. People are walking on the on the on the rutted area. True. Um, so I, I can have to see that again, but the ruts are going to still be coming there because people are driving on it. You mean that the the, uh, the county trail contractors are driving on it? I, I honestly don't know who is um but there's obviously vehicle traffic going in and out of there uh, right well pull steve lennon's and, and matt johnson's chain again because they kind of washed their hands of it and said that was that was all our our responsibility yeah i know all right all right um, okay that's helpful I'll, I'll get a hold of them thanks all right yeah. sorry to cut you off richard no it's okay it's all right good good thing going on the other thing just to uh uh, bring up speed on and, and Steve and Doug give us some help. Uh, the sewer authority notified us that they had approved Carvana's sewer plan and they want to remind us that there's a three party agreement between Jevic, the county and Delanco for the use of the force main that Jevic when it was there, which is now Carvana, used to pump their sewage. They have a, a pump station, they pump the sewage to the uh, 
sanitary uh, manhole in front of the DMV and the county connected its Pennington Park bathroom and then we eventually connected our Field of Dreams bathroom to that pipe. And there is a three-party agreement that says if something goes wrong, the owner of the pump station, and now it's Carvana, has to fix it and then bills the county and the municipality one third, one third, and they pay one third. Uh, the bottom line is, I don't know if Carvana knows about this, that they inherited this. And so I'm going to pass this on and ask uh, Steve and Doug to see if they can advise how we make sure Carvana now knows that this happens. There's not been an issue since this, what, 12 years, uh, 2004. So it's, it's been a while. We haven't had any problem, but uh, just bring it up for the record so that all of you hear that it happens. And then I'll get advice as to how to make sure Carvana knows about it in case something should come up. Um, other small item, remember a couple of weeks ago, we were talking about from the sewer authority, their pump station, and we had to check and verify that in fact, the uh, change in their pump station on Hickory, where they're putting in a backup generator and, and landscaping was actually on their land, but it didn't show up on our tax map. And so hopefully uh, this year, next time ERI updates tax maps, the deed that was done in the late 1900s, giving that land to the sewer authority will show up on the tax map. But uh, uh, I got an email uh, from Matt that he happened to be looking at the West Avenue stuff. And it's a little mixed up over in West Avenue as to what land is owned by the township for the recreation concession stand building versus what's owned by the sewer authority. And it appears to indicate that the land where the concession stand is owned by the sewer authority and where they have theirs as part of a public right of way. And so the question is, I said to Doug, so how do we resolve this? And one way to do it is you go to a surety title and you pay him to verify all this stuff. Well, he thought it was a simple matter. And because they charge by the lot, there's two lots involved. We're talking about six, $800 to perhaps verify what deeds and titles go to what, and then have to make all the changes and so on. We decided that we don't think that this is something, I, you don't like to spend any public money on anything. We're just spending big money on other stuff. But I don't know that it's worth spending initially the six to $800 plus future dollars to try to clear this up unless someone else feels otherwise. So, I mean, that's there. If someone's interested in doing something, just so you know, that's the starting price. And then there'll probably be more after that. So I'll bring that up in case anyone has any opinions. Yeah, just how, how would this come up in the future? Like who, who would make this? Uh, let, let's say uh, if what they're saying, if in fact the concession stand is shown as being owned by the sewer authority and some change needs to be made in the concession stand and there seems to be any kind of conflict there, could slow things up and so on. We can't, Doug and I, we couldn't figure out why, since sewer authority is us, why that would ever be an issue any more than if the sewer authority needed, if for some reason the township had not deeded directly to sewer authority that land on Hickory for their pump station, it's still us. So same thing would have happened. So that's why we figured at this point in time, it was fascinating. We never would have looked at it if we hadn't, they hadn't uh, talked about the change in the pump station on Hickory. And so it's just an interesting thing to note that should never come up again. But hopefully yeah, when the RI is doing the tax maps. Why can't the deeds just be revised? Why can't uh, they just revise the deeds? Well, we don't know that the information is correct. What, what so there's no talk. surveys? There's no surveys anywhere? Apparently not. Just have to do the, the research through the surety companies, right, Steve? I don't know. Right. I mean, if there's not if there's not accurate surveys or, or or and you can't tell from the deeds where you know who has what, then then yeah, I mean that, that you got to track that down, and that the way to track that down would be through the the, uh, the title companies. But um, you know, I, I hadn't discussed this with with Doug or Richard prior to this, but I I tend to agree that if if right now no one's making an issue out of it, and given the the relationship between the entities, it's probably unlikely that there's going to be an issue made out of it. 
Um, so at this point, I, I'm not sure that there's any any purpose in spending uh, public funds to to try to track down track down an issue that right now just is is not not an, an issue at all. Um, if it becomes an issue in the future, I guess we we address it at that point. All right. Let sleeping deeds done. Right. <laughs> Uh, so, Steve, uh, this is Fern. Uh, so, as far as liability, uh, both entities are under the township's uh, insurance umbrella? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They are? The sewage authority is with us? No, sewage authority is on their own. Yeah, so they're not yeah, under the same. I know, they aren't under the same, but, but they, they are, are under the same. But in, insurance, insurance-wise, I guess you you have they're they're both covered, um, and probably with the same or similar similar coverages would be would be my my guess. Thank you. Okay. All right. So I just want to report that the other thing I want to report is on the uh, best practices. We uh, Janice and Bob and I uh, submitted it. Uh, that's the requirement that uh, the three of us do that. Uh, Janice, her job is to verify that we've submitted it and schedule a date when we discuss it publicly. So we recommend it be at your next meeting on the 22nd. I'll send out a memo uh, summarizing it in the areas that we had to say no and why, as we said before, and we'll put it on the uh, next agenda. Specifically, we have to list it as a specific discussion item for your next agenda, but we had uh, 20 some, we need only 16 yeses and, and we had 20, we had 20.5. So we're well, uh, no aid withholding, the maximum, uh, I forget what the maximum, I think it's 23 or something like that. Anyhow, so we'll go over that. There were a lot of unscored questions where it's basically now they do a questionnaire on a lot of issues. So we'll be bringing up those issues as part of our discussion on the 22nd. Um, I think that's all I have. Thank you. And budgets are due shortly from departments, but they're, they're working on them. All right. Uh, thank you. Department heads. Uh, let's see. Start off with Chief DeSanto. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just wanted to, I think I had mentioned last meeting about a handicap uh, ordinance that uh, Doug was uh, working on for us to update, uh, to cover the semi-public areas. Uh, there was, uh, you know, the, the one that caught our attention was the uh, quest about the Field of Dreams. And then, um, and then at the last minute, our Carvana reached out to us and asked to be included. Uh, they were supposed to give me some information, so I stopped there today to follow up. The person who I've been corresponding back and forth with is not is not in. Uh, they're coming in tomorrow. I had to give Doug some information, and uh, with that information that I gathered today, I have a follow-up question for Doug, uh, whether they should be included with this ordinance or not, uh, because of the information, I, some of the information I learned from them today reference to the how they use the handicap parking. Um, the uh, next item is, uh, I think I mentioned to you, there was a request from a resident for the uh, 300 block of Holly Street uh, asking for a uh, street lamp to be included on that street uh, further down closer to, um, to the uh, third street intersection. And I checked the area out and I told you I would reach out to public service and see what the estimated cost would be to add a, um, a street lamp of 36 watt LED. And they said it would be approximately $21 per month. So my recommendation is to add that street lamp. There's been uh, increased activity there um, between the neighbor disputes. So I think it would possibly help um, uh, make the neighbors feel a little more safer in regards to uh, how they're conducting themselves and, and how the other neighbors are conducting themselves. So I'm recommending for the $21 a month, we, we add the, the lamp. And then uh, the next uh, item is no shave November. The police department's participating in that. We, um, the officers have uh, 
all made a contribution uh, to in order to be able to grow facial hair, uh, which is uh, beards are not permitted, but under this uh, program, under this uh, charity program, uh, what they do is they uh, all make a donation and then um, and we supply that uh, total donation to them and in turn the officers can grow uh, facial hair, a beard for the month of November. The association, uh, the Lanka Police Association picked the uh, Pearson Fund, which is a uh, is a fund run by the Teachers Association at the uh, the Pearson School, and um, so we're we're going to make our contribution to that fund um, for the uh, No Shave November. I uh, late this afternoon I sent you guys an email. I got a official uh, in writing uh, approval for the detention project that uh, we've been working on. We uh, submitted uh, a schematic of our you know most recent design um, after doing our research and I reported to you about going to violin Mansfield. So we um, have met with them. Uh, they made one, well, I should say a couple of suggestions. We incorporated them. And then uh, on a Thursday, well, I guess Friday, I received a, um, a letter from them saying that the schematic was approved by them. So the next step, unless you have objection, is to have the architect start uh, gathering together all the information uh, needed to go to bids. So I want to report that. And Richard had told uh, the committee that once I got the approval that uh, you guys would get the chance to put, have any input if you, if you wanted to. And, um, and we're ready to move forward if, if you guys are. Uh, Chief, I, I looked at that. Uh, yeah, I saw your email today with the uh, the attachment and the plans. The one question that that I had, you know, it, it's it's the two alcoves with a a bench that uh, um, someone who's being held uh, is basically assigned seating under you know uh, in that alcove. But on the the one that's closest to the door, the first one as you'd enter on the right, is there any kind of partition there, um, you know, plexiglass or anything between that, that alcove where that person uh, is being held and where the officers work? Uh, no, we, uh, we were initially looking at making a, a double um, looking look through partition or glass or plexiglass. I'll say glass for you know, lack of better description. But what we determined is they, um, if we start looking glass through glass, you're going to get distortion, and then they're going to go. They started going into well, it's not um, it's not a complete um, uh, you know line of sight issue. So uh, rather than get into glass, looking through glass, looking through glass, um, and just having one glass to look through the second alcove, which would be the primary one. Um, that, that would be the primary one, the one with the, the glass. And the second one we used as a supplement or overflow. And also if, uh, you know, if you had to separate uh, genders, then, then we would utilize the, the alteration to the interview room. Um, so that, that would give us options and which would also put in a glass window in that interview room. Uh, so no, uh, there, there is no plexiglass. Uh, we, um, we want to get into uh, a match with them, a battle on about uh, them because they really didn't want, they want a clearest line of sight. And so we said, okay. And so that was the best design we could come up with um, without uh, getting too crazy with cost because you start adding a wall with plexiglass or just a plexiglass wall. Then you start getting to, it's becoming a cell again, so. Yeah, no, it was just uh, when when I when I saw it, like, you know, like you say, you, you, the primary cell would be the 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 inboard one, the furthest one, and then but if you had a a second uh, uh, person there that was uh, uh, not enjoying their stay there, uh, anything that they could you know throw or or send towards the officer's direction and while they're working at the, the desk there. Uh, uh, that was the thing that caught my eye there. So, there is an addition to a knee wall uh, that's uh, 
that's going in to, as a protection between separating the desks to that bench, that's going to be an addition as well. Right. So, right. so as they're sitting, it's it's pretty much a, a shield or a protection, some some sort of protection. So that was the best design we could, giving the uh, you know what they what they're asking for and the, the line of sight and the, the the width of the room is what really kept us from doing what we really like to do. So we worked with the dimensions of the room as is. Um, we really wanted to go side by side, but then there would be no pathway to the bathroom. Okay. Yeah, so I think what I'm gonna do is, is ask the architect to put in writing his updated professional fee proposal, uh, just within what's been approved because things have changed and his final uh, construction estimate and timetable. And uh, we'll probably get things out to bid soon. We'll keep you posted. The funding is there. This project is significantly less than what was originally estimated anyhow. So I don't see a problem in that area, but, and these are not with products, not steel that we had a problem with before and the supply chain issues. So this should be a relatively simple project. And I see we have the, the parking uh, that we talked about in Brunton Avenue in the discussion item. So I'll, you know, I'll uh, put my input in there if you need me to. Uh, when we get to that, um, we do. No, we that's do. not a discussion. No, that's for you to bring up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we decided to let you bring it up instead of the discussion item. Either your case. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, once I think we talked about uh, you know making extending um, the uh, parking that's prohibited uh, from the crosswalk. You know, typically it's twenty five feet. And, uh, Burlington and Franklin. Yeah. And so then um, we, we, I recommended to go 40 feet uh, to give more, um, I guess, line of sight for traffic that's traveling northbound on, Bur on Burlington Avenue from, from Riverside. And um, so it's, and I, you know, I, I didn't know if, uh, if it was advertised to the public, but um, the impact is going to be the residents on the 300, 400 block of Burlington Avenue. And um, so I just figured uh, if anyone had any um, input on it from the public, that might be a, an area. I don't know if you want to do it now or wait until the second uh, public session. But Well, if you're going to introduce it as an, if they want to introduce it as an ordinance or a public hearing, uh, how many parking spaces would we lose, two or one? Uh, we would lose two. Right. You lose one by going to the 25 foot anyhow, and then you lose, or would you lose two anyhow? But you would lose, Even, you would lose one in each location. One, yeah. The one total of two. One, one at Vine Street and one at uh, Franklin. Oh, okay. Franklin. A total of two. Oh, one at Vine, one at Franklin. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So the question is whether we would have to do an ordinance to change the parking there. And the question is, is this something that yeah. Well, you, you do you have know. to change ordinance because the statute is 25 feet. Right. The statute says you can e extend that by ordinance. Right. I think it's the thing to do to protect those crosswalks. Definitely. I agree. I've had so many complaints about people trying to cross and nobody can see them. So yeah. I'm definitely in favor of it. Any other comments from the committee on that? Yeah. We'll move forward with an ordinance to amend. It's two spaces lost, regardless of. What no, I mean, if we go to 40 feet, you're going to lose a space at each location in front of the ice cream bar and in front of Lou's Deli. Yeah, and the person that parks in front of Lou's Deli, it's not, it's not even a customer using it. It's somebody who lives along there. Yeah, I, I think they're all residents that yeah, they're, they're, they're the spot's gonna be lost or or a residents that park there. Right. So we're still gonna have a public hearing to let them weigh in? Or is tonight the night that we're voting on it? No, you have to have a public hearing, of course. You have to have a public hearing. Now usually the public hearing gets advertised in the legal section. So if you want to specifically notify people in that area then you have to do a flyer or something like that if you have some desire to do that either now or do it in 2022 
it's a question of how you want to handle it. If, if it appears that the majority of you want us to do the ordinance, then this question what process you want to use to, well, in some cases we've done that where it's, it deals with a specific area and you want to let those people affected know you could do that. The public hearing then would be on the, at the December meeting, right, Janice? Introduced on the 22nd, public hearing December 6th or 20th. It's 6th probably, and then you can extend to the 20th. You can't make a decision. So you have some time. Yeah, that is correct. Yeah. You can enter, there's still time to introduce ordinances um, yeah. and have them adopted by the end of the year. The ordinance is required to be published in the newspaper, posted on the official bulletin board, and we also, um, while that while not required by law, we do post them on our website. Yeah, I would say being that this will impact residents, not customers, I think that we have an obligation to, to properly notice them and let them have an opportunity to speak out and say why, you know, why, why they have to park there versus not. We've done that in the past and we've actually sent letters to the residents that live in the area for other issues. So that's what I would suggest we do for this particular ordinance as well. The residents on, on Burlington Avenue. So we'll put it on the agenda for the 22nd. Yes. Put together a notice. The public here will be on the 6th. Can I, can I just ask how this evolved? I mean, we've worked so hard for years on revamping Burlington Avenue from the streetscape and, you know, filling in those abandoned businesses. I mean, the ice cream shop, that, you know, Rancocas Environmental, how we tore it down, made a park. We, we've been working years. Now, all of a sudden, we're going to give up two valuable parking spots. Can somebody tell me, is this is this in response to somebody complaining or is it what you guys saw? Because, you know, when we got that flashing crosswalk light, this was supposed to protect us against liabilities that we did not protect our citizens. We protected our citizens by putting that crosswalk up. Um, and then the county, we met with the county and the county said, well, we don't want to do uh, Vine Street yet, you know, until we get uh, look at the site triangle. From what I understand, we're going to discuss that telephone pole. Why are we jumping on this? We, we didn't even give that crosswalk light a chance or the building being down at the corner a chance to really get people used to this. What, is this reactionary or is this proactive? I Because if it's proactive, I really think we should just relax and see what happens. We've done a lot. We've done a lot along Burlington Avenue. Uh, we changed the parking in front of Pied Out, you know, to let them go 15 minutes in there. Some explain how this evolved, because I'm not privy so, to the inside. School. I don't know, John, if you don't receive complaints from residents, but I do. And I actually um, took the route more than one time during the day. You have to realize, number one, Moose Deli wasn't there for quite a number of years, and neither was the ice cream bar. So the busier they get, the more people that cross. And if you come from Riverside and you, and Jesse checked it out, I'm not making this up. I mean, he's backing it. So, so Kate, has this come from you? Is this No, you? it's come from residents that have contacted me. Okay, because my brother lived over there on that street for years and parking is a, you know, their spots are premium spots. They all need to spot. I understand that, but the, but some of those homes that are on Burlington Avenue have access on the alleyway in the back. They have driveways in the back. Yes, they do. Some they do, there. so they have another access. Well, I mean, to be fair, that a lot of the people that live on the other side of Burlington Avenue do use, utilize the northbound side to park their cars. Right. And a lot of them park right drivers. on the front. A lot of them park right on the front of their property, too. So, I mean, um, I don't see it being a real problem because there's plenty of parking on Franklin and there's plenty of parking on Vine if they have to move around the corner. And there's still spots on Burlington Avenue at times. So I, I think the safety of our residents, whether it be children trying to cross, um, Maybe they're not pushing the button. Well, I, yeah, I see people not even pushing the button, but I have seen I people pushing. pushing the I button. thought people giving the option of pushing the button was the safety that we needed to make sure they were okay. 
Okay, if they don't cross well, the phone, I, they I'm the in favor of the of this being put on the agenda, invite the public. I'm in favor of it for the safety of our residents. Because something's going to happen. The residents, Kate, I, I don't I don't hear these residents complaining about the brand new crosswalk. Okay. Uh, they're they're uh, complaining to me about the parking. You're a different phase than I am. You talk to all the residents. Evidently they call you. You know, yeah, they do. I get emails. Hire. They call me. Okay, I get right, complaints right, all the right. time. Let's let's we'll we'll put this on the agenda as an introduction, and we'll air it all out at a public hearing, and right, we'll good. post it. We'll put it on the website. Maybe a, a map schematic to show what what uh, tax map uh, depiction of that intersection, uh, what parking spots are going to be uh, eliminated, um, and we'll. We'll have it out uh, at the December meeting. So, but I, I think it's uh, it's it's uh, something we need to do. Uh, the sight lines to those crosswalks are bad, and uh, they were bad before the the installation of the uh, crossing light, and they're still bad after the installation of the crossing light. So, right. Um, uh, but uh, as Kate mentioned, the increased traffic with those two businesses that have been uh, uh, successful. Um, it's a, it's a different, uh, there's a different uh, level of risk there. And uh, uh, I think it's something that needs to be uh, addressed to improve the sight line. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I slow down well below the speed limit there just because I can't see, uh, you just can't see someone stepping out in front of you there. And you don't realize it until you're on top of that intersection. So I think gaining the extra uh, 15, 20 feet of clearance um, to see that uh, the full intersection there is, is, as uh, sooner as you're coming down Burlington uh, Avenue is uh, enhances safety for all. It's the cheapest way to do it. Um, me, I would, you know, the, I think the, the best way to do it to preserve the parking, but it's going to cost money is have a bump out at each one. So, um, so the pedestrian is beyond or equal to the side of the car before they cross and they can be seen. But you know you got you got to bump out the curb and and everything. So I mean, you're starting into big bucks, and I know these guys already have a list of infrastructure that you're working on. I thought that's what Marty Livingston was designing, um, you know, prior to his retirement was, but not 40 feet back, 25 feet. No, no. What I'm saying is, you you bring the corner out past the front of the car. Yeah, I, I know. So, so when you park, you just can't drive forward. You actually have to, you know, pull into the right. lane of traffic. But how far back? How far back would they have done it, Jesse? They would have done it twenty-five feet, not forty. No, no, no. no. Well, I would keep the twenty-five feet, but build the bump out. Oh, I but, see. Okay. You know what I mean? Keep the yeah. twenty-five feet, build the bump out, but you know, now you got road work and you know, prevailing wage and curb work, and so. Put um, those. Put the put the bollards there, you know, or the cones. Um, Right at that 25 feet marker. That's what some towns do. They have the little, little flexy ones that bend over. I understand what you're saying. Listen, that crosswalk, you know, listen, I'll be honest, and I know I'm on record. I blew through it once, the yellow light blinking. I, I just forgot about it or not used to it yet. Or I'm looking at the one northbound coming up to the blinking light, I mean, to the curve. And uh, I even admit myself, I, you know, I'm still learning it. So, and the residents, I, I you know, I, I see the, the, the kids on bicycles, they blow right across. They don't stop and push the button, nor would I probably have at 14 years old or 13, you know, but, um, you know, we have to give it a chance. And uh, Mike, I'm only saying this because you said we were going to hash it out and, and, you know, at the next meeting and uh, you started, you put your opinion in, so I'm putting mine in. Preliminarily laying the groundwork on mine. All right, all right, all right. All right, I'm I'm done. <laughs> You're done, Peter. I'm done. Thanks, Chief. Uh, Mr. Fenimore, are you still out there? Yes, I am. Good evening, John. Can you John. hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, go. Okay. Um, we picked up uh, 69 late stops on brush, which was about 30 yards of chipped up brush. This was after... Uh, brush pickup was over. Uh, we put a ton and a half uh, tons of asphalt out, filling in holes in the streets, um, things like that. 
Uh, we filled in eight gullies or holes between the curves and the sidewalk that uh, were from probably old trees that rotted out. Um, anything that looked like a hazard between the, the curb and the sidewalk, we tried to take care of. Uh, the leaf pickers are ready, and we started picking up leaves today. We helped with the 5K run and also with the rabies clinic. And we removed another load of debris from the boat ramp. So uh, even though the boats don't use it, it looks like all the debris uses it, and we try to keep it uh, uh, free of logs and stuff to get hung up on our um, alcohol pipe. Um, another thing, I think we'll, one of the major things that we need to contact the county and ask them how come Riverside gets flooded out and then we have to close the bridge off. I think if uh, this should be a joint meeting with Riverside and Delanco with either the bridge commission or the county highway department and get this fixed. I think it wouldn't be a hard fix to do, put one of those duck bells in and it would eliminate uh, a lot of this flooding out that causes us either if um, we know that's going to be a high tide, we usually put the um, signs out. But if not, they, I get called and my guys get overtime for that. Now, uh, you know, over the course of the years, that could add up to a lot of money. Uh, I think somebody needs to call the county, set up a joint meeting. Uh, with Riverside, tell Riverside it's time, you know, and, and then they put this bike ramp in. What are they going to do about the bike ramp when that gets flooded out? You won't be able to drive across there with your bikes. So I think it's a serious problem that uh, Riverside and Delanco should get together with uh, the county. Uh, it's probably the bridge commission's uh, problem, but uh, I think it's about time. I mean, uh, as long as I've been here, uh, we've always had problems like that. So I think the time is now to try to do something. That's all I have. Now, John, I had sent a, some time ago, I'll have to resurrect it, but I had sent uh, a letter to the Bridge Commission on that very topic and uh, you know, suggesting some kind of a wireless electronic sign at, uh, at our uh, you know, Cooper Street and Burlington Avenue and over in Riverside at uh, Pavilion and River Road, you know, when the bridge is you know, closed due to flooding. And that would, you know, divert the traffic, you know, at both ends uh, and give people enough notice so they're not bottlenecked and trapped uh, and stuck there. So uh, I'll see if I can find that again and, uh, or generate a new one and, and send that to the bridge and maybe get that conversation started. But uh, yeah. well, the thing is, is, it's not that the bridge goes out. Everybody thinks that the bridge goes out. It's the flooding in Riverside. So, I mean, it, it, it does inconvenience a lot of people because if you people don't like residents are trying to get through to go home, they got to go all the way down 130 and, and yes. come in the back road. Yes. I mean, I, I don't know why, um, you know, that they've let they this should, go so long. Yeah, they should correct the issue. They should correct it with some kind of pipe or something. Like you said, John, you're absolutely right. Did they ever I mean, what, you know, how long, how long has this been going on? I mean, geez, this has been going on for years. Oh, for years, definitely years. And, and I mean, and, you know, the bridge commission, uh, they say it's not their problem because the bridge ain't closed. It, what it comes down to that low area over um, as you cross on the other side into Riverside. And um, I guess I mean, private, it, 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 privately owned property. Yeah, I mean, it, it was so bad. I think it went in that garage um, that was, you know, as you cross over the bridge there. Um, and I think it went into that place. So, I mean, that was a lot of water. And, you know, occasionally you do get a lot of, you know, high tire. But, I mean, um, for this to constantly go on and nobody act like, you know, this is the way it should be. I mean, um, I think now is the time that they, they invested all this money into the, you know, the bike sidewalk thing. 
I, I think that you know it probably should have been addressed before this. So I think if you know we get together with Riverside and and try to you know see what's going on. Now I've already told uh, the superintendent for the county, and he was supposed to go out. Um, they were going to rent a boat or something and and see on the seawall um, what pipe is in there. So um, that would be the ideal thing is, you know, to have it blocked off there with that duck bell or whatever um, other valve box that, you know, they have to put in. But there again, you know, I don't know how good the wall was there. Great, John. Thank you. Thanks for the good work. And uh, yep. everyone, uh, you know, uh, operating safely. Uh, you guys were we right. also just so you know we did have a, a toolbox meeting um, starting uh, you know up with the leaf season and we made sure that safety gear and earplugs and dust masks if you need them uh, um, you know stay off the phone and um, you know uh, when we go on Burlington Avenue we always try to have a tr truck behind us for safety you know the the guys on the back. So we we discussed that. All right. That's all. Yep. All right, John. Thank you so much. Uh, administration, Mrs. Lord. Yes, a couple of things. Uh, the first one, I'll actually put my housing ways on how on uh, to piggyback on um, Harry's report. Yeah, uh, the. High Point did the CO its last house. Uh, and with the sale of that last house, triggers the uh, developer's COA obligation to uh, deliver the COA units uh, as prescribed in the uh, redevelopment agreement, the, the developer's agreement. So uh, the, the developer has been um, placing money in escrow with his attorney um, as each house is selling. And then upon the sale of the last house, um, triggers the obligation either to produce these the COA units in town or uh, through either um, a infill, a new construction infill or market to affordable or to turn the um, failure to produce those units in a certain time period. He has to uh, turn over that uh, those funds that have been deposited um, for those market units uh, that have been built. So I would ask Steve if he could just uh, let Doug know. Doug is, uh, has been corresponding with the attorney for the developer and uh, we've been tracking the escrow deposits over this few years, but with the, la with the final CO, uh, it does trigger the uh, delivery of those COA units. And then, um, the th thank you, Steve. The last thing, the second thing is, and I'm out, is Bev on, Beverly? Beverly or Aaron, if you could give a report on the rabies clinic that we had this past Saturday on um, November 2nd at the- um, uh, I'm here, I, Dennis. I Over can, here. oh, Beverly, are you there? Yep, oh, I'm there here. you are, okay. Hey, Bev. Hi, um, uh, this past Saturday from nine to 11, we uh, held our annual rabies clinic, our free rabies clinic. We did it again as a drive up um, service for residents of our town and neighboring towns. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it worked out very well. It seemed to be very convenient for um, the pet owners. They drive up through the public works uh, garage in the front and go through the back and around. And the doctor gives the shots most of the time in the car. Um, I guess if they had some small ones, they could pull them out. Um, we did request that pet owners uh, register in advance from a form on our website so they could print that out. And that's what they would use to mark if it was a one year, three year vaccine and we mail out the rabies service. So we did have um, a, lot of, a lot of residents and pet owners that um, expressed that it was convenient for them. It was quick. Um, they didn't have to get out of their cars. We of course maintained um, CDC guidelines for um, you know, distance and, and wore masks and, and, and what have you. And uh, I think it went very well. We had about 75 people come through, 75 pets come through. Well done, thank you. 
thank, uh, thank you, Beverly. The drive you. the drive through clinic is um, even even when we're past COVID, uh, it's it's something that we want to continue. It's just more, it's quicker, it's efficient, it's contactless, or a lot more contactless, <laughs> um, and um, the residents like it. Yeah, it's great. It's great service. I thought it was great. They like the um, the vets climbed right in the car, sat next to Scout, and like did a quick shot. He didn't even know what hit him. So they were, yeah. they were awesome. They Curly didn't even get out of his box. He was still in his cart, and they just Robin just went in and gave him the shot. So it was it's it's very convenient and it's less messy for people standing in line. Their animals and the public works garage and there's no barking uh, so it's just a much pleasant much it's just a nicer way to do it it really is thank you and i just want to thank um the administrative staff uh they put this together they get all the supplies and everything ready coordinate with the vet make sure there's the serums picked up that we have enough syringes um everything from a to z to make this a successful rabies clinic every year And that's all I have. Thank you. Very good. So now everyone's dog is afraid of the car now. <laughs> I had a cat. My dog. Dog. So mine was a cat. And cat. <laughs> all right. Let's see. I think we got everybody there. Consent agenda items. Uh, consent agenda items are considered to be routine, will be enacted with a single motion, and the item requiring discussion will be removed from the consent agenda. All consent agenda items will be reflected in full in the minutes. Are there any items on the consent that anyone's got any questions on or want to uh, removed and uh, considered separately? <laughs> Hearing no objections, here we go. Resolution 2021-125, approving grant agreement between the Township of Belanco and the State of New Jersey for a New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection Community Forestry Grant. Resolution 126, 2021 budget appropriation transfers. Resolution 127, disposal of out of service, out of service office equipment. Resolution 128, refund of tax overpayments. Resolution 129, refund of construction permit overpayment. Payment of bills. I've got two columns, uh, one from last month and one uh, for the current month. Let's do uh, October 21st uh, to start. Current fund, uh, $79,385.53. Payroll, $146,989.82. Capital, $33,263.75. The dog fund, $3,986.00. Uh, unemployment fund, $76.50. Escrow trust, $16,529.46. Municipal open space, $16,133.39. For November 5th, uh, current fund $1,398,373.93. Payroll $106,816.60. Capital $86,183.50. Uh, all the way down to escrow trust $12,269.65. Municipal open space $3,205.08. The approval of consent agenda, please. A motion. So moved. Hello. Motion by Mr. Olette. Second. I'll second. Second by Ms. Fitzpatrick. Roll call, please. Mr. Brown. Yes. Ms. Fitzpatrick. Yes. Ms. Holland. Yes. Mr. Olette. Yes. And Mr. Templeton. Yes, thank you. Uh, status of coronavirus disease, COVID-19 executive orders. Uh, I was looking through some stuff on the state website and couldn't find anything new. And Mrs. Laura, do you have anything? Or Mr. Olette, have you heard anything? No. Any changes, updates? No, nothing specific to the township um, or change in, there's been no changes in our uh, municipal building um, facility COVID policies. Of course, um, they have expanded the age, ages where, you know, children can, younger children can now get the vaccines um, other than that, uh, they have, um, there are some travel, uh, restriction changes with CDC guidelines, but our, our policy, our COVID policy manual basically states that we will follow the, um, most current CDC guidelines right. and our municipal building continues to 
require masks um, for entering into the municipal building, except where you're in your employees in uh, his or her own workspace. All right, and uh, vaccines are out and available and boosters and so forth. And there seems to be a good supply. No, uh, not a whole lot of limitation as far as appointment. So I'm going get it. Uh, correspondence, Mrs. Lohr. Yes, uh, the first piece of correspondence is um, we did receive notification from the New Jersey Department of Transportation that we have been awarded a municipal um, fiscal year 2022 municipal aid uh, road program grant and the amount of $150,000. And that was for the submitted grant application for Vine, Cedar and Maple, uh, that project. The uh, other piece of correspondence, yeah. It was actually a letter received from John Payang uh, of Delville Avenue and uh, indicating a few comments from the last township committee meeting. Um, he noted his comments on the crosswalk at Franklin. Uh, also uh, what he feels should be done with the uh, demolition of 200 Ash Street, he feels that just salvaged some bricks um, uh, and that anything else would involve too much time and money. And, and they're uh, holding uh, meetings in person. Um, he's concerned that someone would be able to contract or spread COVID at a meeting and um, uh, asked about if we had liability of someone to uh, be able to prove that they contracted COVID uh, from the municipal building or somewhere in the municipal building. Um, and that's all the correspondence that I have, thank you. Okay. Is someone talking? Is Mike talking? I'm sorry. I have my. I always mute myself because <laughs> yeah. I have this this cough that I uh, I didn't want to. Look anyway. Um, meetings now open to the public for the second public comment period. Uh, the chat function will be reopened, Aaron. And uh, as usual, state your it's name, on. address, and. Uh, Type quickly on the chat so you know we know you're out there and want to say something there. Even if you can't get completely typed, what you uh, somebody wants to type something, just say hi and your name, and we'll know that you're typing. Has anybody stepped up yet? Uh, I'll put my hand up. Uh, I think I'm on mute. Can you hear me? We can hear you, Peter. Okay, thank you, Peter Fritz, 303 Union Avenue, and. Uh, um, I guess speaking uh, at least partially on behalf of the uh, history board, uh, it was interesting. John uh, Paye's uh, comment in the in the letter that uh, came up that uh, the history board had made an effort to try to get some grant money to uh, assist with salvaging some of the uh, bricks or you know a, a section of a beam or something like that that we might be able to use as the basis for a sign. Um, if you're going to carry through and, and make that a, a park and you would want to put a sign on the park. And I understood uh, in earlier conversations that in order to uh, have some salvage that, uh, of some materials out of that building that had to be worked into the demolition process um, because that was uh, going to be an extra cost to, uh, to have that done is during the demolition process. That wasn't just a you know, free bricks that it, you know would have to be written into the contract. So when we found out that we had a um, a grant that was possible that uh, comes out of the um, it's the Burlington County uh, portion of the uh, Historic Preservation Partnership grant, uh, which is made available um, each year. This year. On you, we haven't taken advantage of it. It's been available for, for a number of years. We've never been able to take advantage of it because there's always been a 50% match requirement. This year, they dropped the 50% match requirement, which would mean that it was 100% grant. And we had taken a vote to, to use that money to, uh, to help to make that salvage and the engineering responsible uh, uh, with that uh, to help pay for that. And we could have applied for a grant of up to $10,000. But uh, 
But when we approached the township about it, what we found out is that the timing was all wrong because we had to have all of our ducks in a row by a certain point in order to get the grant um, uh, submitted and then approved. And once it's uh, submitted and approved, the money would have come in our next year in, in 2022 and the work would have been done in 2022, but we just didn't have the approvals lined up. So in the long run, we lost the opportunity of uh, applying for the grant this year. We don't know whether that um, the grant's gonna be available on a no match basis next year, but we're gonna look at it a lot earlier in the year to find out where, where things stand and make sure that we can find a project that not only the history board can live with, but obviously that the township can uh, can live with, so we can possibly help each other with a with a project that's uh, larger that we can usually deal with on a on an annual basis, given the budget that we get from the township. So just to let you know that we tried, and um, uh, so you know we'll see what happens uh, next year. And, and I have tried to, to look at that possibility in the grant, um, in the, I'm sorry, in our budget uh, process, which uh, I'll be going over with uh, uh, with Richard, hopefully in the next uh, week or so, maybe I can get over and go over that grant with you and just make sure that I'm putting things down the, the way that you'd like to see them. Uh, so anyway, that was uh, that, was that uh, point. And, um, well, thanks for the good try uh, by the history. Well, yeah, we, we tried and we, we looked at a couple of projects and we saw that that was one that was going to have some uh, financial impact that we thought maybe we could solve from the blow, uh, yeah. but just the timing that didn't work out. Uh, they give us very little advance notice about it, uh, that grant. We only get about three weeks to look at the thing before the, the deadline and we don't have enough time to wait around for the, you know, the, all the usual uh, approval processes from your end. That's not uncommon on some grants. Uh, you seem by the time it filters down through the different uh, state agencies, by the time it hits your doorstep, uh, it's uh, it's an all hands on deck to get something out the door um, yeah. to comply with it. So, And I do I have a pretty good handle on that grant because uh, they have asked me for the past three or four years, they've asked me to be on the reading committee that helps make the decisions about who gets those grants. And I've been working with the county, and so I read every grant that's that's crossed the threshold, and I have a pretty good idea how that committee thinks in terms of what'll fly and what won't fly, and what kinds of things they're looking for. Yeah. And uh, as you all know, that the money for that grant comes out of the open space uh, money that um, that we've approved. It's open space and historic preservation, and we're very pleased that they're starting to put a little bit more money at, at the historic preservation end because up to this point, most of that open space money is going to soccer fields. So- um, Thank you very much. Thank you, so, appreciate it. Okay, anyway, it was, uh, I did have one question. You were talking about the, um, the Riverfront Park and I know you were talking about the seawall aspect of the Riverfront Park. And uh, it sounded like you're, you're going to be doing this in phases that you're going to do the, um, um, the seawall first, and then you're going to look at the improvements on the park itself, because I just wanted to make sure that we kind of keep that concept of replacing the old gazebo. And I saw that the gazebo was in the in the uh, plan that I saw, what, two years ago or so, um, for a replacement gazebo. I wanted to make sure that that was uh, still at the works for uh, the improvement work. That's, that's, that's a long way down the road yet, so. Uh, we're just trying to get some steel in the ground. Okay. Right well, that sounds good. And that's, of course, the right way to do it. So uh, appreciate it. And I guess that's what's on my mind tonight, unless anybody's got any questions about uh, history board that I can answer. Okay. Thanks okay. so much, Peter. Appreciate All right. it. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments in the second uh, public comment session? Yes, Mayor. Hello, um, Dr. Paye, go ahead. Uh, John Paye, 101 Delview Lane. Um, I was listening to the discussion of Field of Dreams with the water pump, and um, I don't have much understanding of Field of Dreams. Does Field of Dreams, is that specifically for Delanco teens and residents? 
it's it's used for the most part by Delanco teams and residents, but since it's it uh, was funded using Green Acres money, it's open to the public, and so travel teams and uh, are scheduled onto those fields uh, uh, by recreation and DISA. Okay, so I'm curious if other um, teams have access to using the privilege of those fields. Do they have to contribute? for some type of um, uh, certificate or application, I'm not sure of the wording of, to pay uh, to have their team play on that field or they are just allowed to play on it? There is a fee that is charged for other associations other than DISA. DISA also does contribute, usually services in kind, and I think Phil and both Matt are online that they can answer those questions. Uh, that, that's good. I mean, I, it was a thought I just had because I was thinking about all the money you have to invest in a pump and I was hoping that there was some revenue coming in that got generated if it was beyond Delanco. So, okay, thank you, that, that's all, thank you. Thanks for the question. Any other questions or comments, anything in the chat? Mayor, there is nothing in the chat. All right. All right, I'll close this uh, second uh, public comment session to the public. We've got a couple of uh, discussion items. Uh, 200 Ash, uh, 200 Ash Street building demolition, salvage issues for bid specifications, continued discussion. Uh, I think uh, Mr. Fox again, uh, there was previous uh, suggestions uh, after the committee uh, uh, decided to, after a public comment uh, discussion that we had uh, what, two months ago on uh, the, uh, the shoe factory campus shop 200 ash, uh, as far as the uh, deciding to, to uh, proceed with the demolition and, uh, and authorizing you to, to uh, generate the specifications for that contract. Uh, there were some suggestions that, uh, you know, a section of a wall or part of a corner or something uh, uh, all the way down to, you know, some bricks for a sign foundation or a walkway should be uh, should be retained or kept. And I think uh, the question was posed to you: What would that add to uh, a basic demo contract? Yeah, um, to 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 save a wall uh, it would be really uh, it would be an expensive extra. Um, because the contractor would have to protect that wall, cut it out separately. Um, so, so that, I mean, you're, you're probably looking in ex, an extra ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 to save a piece of a wall. Um, to save bricks would be pretty much negligible. Uh, the contractor could just take some bricks, pile them over, and set them aside for someone. Um, that, that would not be an issue at all. Um, to save any type of structural uh, beams and things like that. Again, you're talking ten thousand dollars ballpark area. I would guess to to, to save something like that. Um, but, so that's kind of where we stand. We we can put them in whichever. If anyone wants one of these options, we can put them in as an alternate to the bid. Um, so we actually get a price, and then you can decide at that point. Um, you can even have all three as alternates and you can pick which one you wanna do. Um, but it, it, it definitely has to be in the, in the contract specs when they, when they bid on it. Um, was Harry gonna discuss the answers to Bill Manaletic's letter or is she just gonna send the answers to Bill? Oh, I, I sent, I'm sorry, I, I, I sent those out today. Yeah, I have it. Okay, so I could send I could send the bill or however you want to, however you whatever you, whatever you prefer. I think Bill Matalevich should receive a copy of your responses. They were very helpful, Harry. Sure. Sure, and I I can send that to him, and if he has any questions, we can certainly discuss it. I did have a, uh, uh, a message or a, a question from a resident on, the, on an adjacent property to the uh, uh, 
200 ash as far as the status of the fence. Uh, uh, I didn't have a, a property survey and so I don't know if the fence is, you know, right on the property line or slightly inboard of the, of the uh, 200 ash property and so forth. But uh, it, it probably goes along with the whole property back for decades. It's in pretty shabby shape uh, as a chain link fence. And I think it's got a, some rusty strands of barbed wire on top of it on, around a good part of the perimeter. Um, and they were just asking, uh, their inquiry was, you know, what's gonna happen with that fence? Is it gonna come down? Is it gonna be replaced? Uh, and my response was, we didn't know at this time, uh, and just added that, uh, you know, if there is something replaced, uh, uh, we certainly would bring in, you know, the, the residents that uh, border that property uh, and uh, talk to them about it and so forth. So I don't know if anyone has anything to add on that or what in a situation like this. Uh, the, the back of the building is, is probably what, two two or three feet off the fence. So I don't know if the fence would uh, uh, would make it through the demolition process, uh, depending on how things went there. So um, anyway, if there's anything you can add to that, uh, that question. Yeah, the, the, the fence, I anticipate the fence to remain. Um, and, and the contractor can certainly work around that with the equipment that they use. They, they, it's basically like a, a big claw and, and they take off pieces at a time. Um, it's not like they're using wrecking balls like you see on TV and things like that. Um, so, so my intention was to keep the fence. If the contractor did damage the fence, he would have to fix it at his cost. Um, I didn't, I, I can add in there to replace the fence if you want a newer fence. Um, but that, that would be up to, up to, up to you. Any questions or comments from the committee uh, at this point on, uh, on this discussion item, or are we, we kind of closed on, uh, uh, is there a direction we wanna, we wanna give there as far as retaining something or nothing? I think retaining uh, some, some amount of uh, bricks uh, uh, might be a, a start. It's the most flexible usage of of the material and doesn't uh, constrain you as, as uh, uh, leaving some part of the wall or foundation, obviously it's, uh, now that's, that's uh, something that you're stuck with as far as a design feature for whatever it is to follow. Uh, but uh, if we get uh, left with uh, a thousand bricks or something like that, that gives us some flexibility to uh, uh, do a lot of different things. Comments? I'm in line with the bricks. Uh, I wasn't thinking in terms of a thousand, but you know, uh, any, anywhere from a hundred to five hundred. But you know, that's I guess immaterial at the moment. As an idea for the bricks, it, it could not only a sign, but you could make a walkway at some point with with the bricks. You know. Um, by, by salvaging a, a certain amount of bricks, at least it, it gives you an option to do something in the future and you're not tied into anything at this point. You know, my comment is let it go. You know, we took down the Wallace's gas station. We uh, tried to save the uh, terracotta roof. Nobody even knows where that is now. We never did nothing with it. Uh, the Ron Flange pipe men, uh, they, they have a history. Uh, you know, you try to save these things. That that building was in is in bad shape. It needs to go. And I mean, trying to save bricks, I think, is silly. Just silly. You're going to see some bricks, uh, just like you see a brick walkway at Gateway Park. Nobody knows where those bricks came from. You're going to see these bricks at um, at the uh, shoe factory, and just I don't. Just a wrench in the gears for progress. Just let's move forward. Have Harry do the uh, the bid specs for demolition, and uh, that's my final saying. Thank you. Uh, we're gonna miss you Monday nights. I know. Don't <laughs> worry. I'll, I'll I'll pop in here and there. 
<laughs> not me, not me. <laughs> Thanks, Kate. Thanks, Kate, my ally. You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome, John. Seriously, man, you beat things to death here. This is, you know, I can't take this anymore. That's why I didn't run. Jesus, stop it. We we made a huge decision to buy that building off that man when nobody was doing anything. Uh, it's a safety Thank you, hazard. John. You made that decision. That was your, you, you got Thank the eight ball on that one. Okay, it's a safety hazard. We did our homework as far as trying to rehab it into a community center. Uh, the, the funding just isn't there. The practicality is not there. Um, you know, we, we got to, I hate to see this thing go 10 years without being demolished only because we're, we're, we're trying we're gonna to save it. We're going to move on this. All right. Okay. All right. So we're done with this. Uh, just a, a clean demo. Is that, is that everyone in agreement there? That's what I'm saying. One, two, three. Give them a hundred bricks. Set them off to the side. <laughs> if someone wants to do something with the sign, uh, fine. Otherwise than that, you know, let's, I agree. Let's move on it. All right. You got enough to work with? Harry, will they kick in a hundred bricks for free? I don't think a hundred bricks is going to make the sign that they were hoping to make. I mean, Look at our sign at the municipal building. Look at the one at the Field of Dreams. Those signs are a lot larger than 100 bricks. All right. Who's going to be the brick count officer? <laughs> I want someone count, someone count bricks for, the, for a sign foundation and someone count bricks for a sidewalk and get that to Harry and we'll put that in and move on. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Uh, proposed ordinance for park regulations. Now we can wake up St uh, Steve. Hey, you know, um, I, I know it was with what what's uh, uh, you can't grill chicken in the park and uh, we took care of all the smoking and vaping and chewing and everything like that is 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 everyone happy with what it is I, I thought we were going to send this to rec to review before we voted on it that's okay uh and we have a meet, Rec has a meeting Thursday night. So I think, you know, that um, Erin's online. Um, she should probably include it in our agenda. Rec should at least review it since they're the park regulations and they're okay. in charge of the right. park. I thought this was ricocheting through Rec uh, through you, but I guess not. Okay. No, you, somebody actually said they were going to send it to Rec. I didn't, I, I, it wasn't my responsibility to do that. I didn't think if I did, I missed it. Okay. So we'll do it on the next meeting on the 22nd. Yeah, if, if you guys are all okay with it, subject to rec, then introduce it on the 22nd. Yep. Yeah. hearing on the 6th. Right. Okay. Definitely. As long as, as long as five of you are okay sending it to rec, right? It makes sense. Yeah. So we'll send it to rec with some bricks. <laughs> Wrong group. Anything else? Yeah, I have one thing I forgot to mention that I want to brief you on that you'll put on the next agenda. We noticed in the um, uh, best practices that there's a regulation that's probably been on the books for a while. That they're just asking towns about dealing with the fire commission. It points out that if a fire district fire commissions have pay compensation, that they're now going to be required to certify on their budgets that they have submitted it to the governing body of their municipality for approval. This is the first year that our fire district has adopted a resolution setting up compensation. Uh, so therefore, uh, their resolution, uh, let's see, you know, it's um, $900 per year paid quarterly. So in order for them to submit their budget, they need your approval for that. And so Doug drafted a resolution that we can put on the agenda for the 22nd, approving their resolution. So we'll put that on, give you that for your next meeting, but I'm bringing it up here just to let you know that it's coming and see if anyone has any questions. And this was, it was, it was kind of serendipitous. We got the, got the letter or the resolution from the fire commissioners about the same time that I think Richard, you said a local finance notice appeared yes. on the same topic. Right. And that's probably what happened. The local finance notice came out September 20th, went to all the fire districts and that's when their solicitors and their 
yeah. chair people and everybody said, oh, you mean we have to do this? And the state is now saying, now has an item on their budget submission. You have to check off that you've done this practice, which has probably been legally required for years, but nobody paid any attention to it till this year. So it's one more little piece of thing every year you're gonna to have to pass this resolution. They'll have to do a resolution, submit it to you. You'll have to pass a resolution as part of their process. So it's it's a routine thing and we'll put it on the agenda for the 22nd, the resolution, okay? okay. Wanna make sure you know. Any questions on okay. that or anything else? Um, we do need to approve that light. So Jesse can have that light put on at Holly Street. We didn't approve it. Do we just do that by a, a motion and I vote? Yes, just by a motion if you wish to do it, yes. It yeah, I move that we, I move that we uh, put a light at that location on Holly Street that uh, Jesse suggested. That's at the uh, 300 block of Holly, is that correct, Chief? That is correct. All right. Well, I'll second, based off of uh, the Chief's comments of uh, the things that go on in the neighborhood that the added light uh, may help. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. All right. I'll get it done. You're good. Fern, Thanks, you have Chief. a comment? Okay. Uh, yes, the Joint Land Use Board uh, last Thursday night approved the plans from uh, the company Blue Water, who has proposed the uh, warehouse building on Coopertown uh, Road. Uh, so they got the go ahead from the Joint Land Use Board so that they can move forward. With the new warehouse, so uh, we'll have a new uh, new person that, or a new company in town. So. Mm. Stay tuned. <laughs> and a lot was, of warehousing going up around. And that was the reason for of the uh, application that was denied. Uh, what two months ago? Correct. Correct. Uh, they had asked for some variances uh, last time, and they were denied. And then they came back with uh, asking for uh, no variances as far as the uh, size of the building uh, and they fit into uh, our ordinances. Yeah. Janice, am I missing anything there? No, not at all. Um, their application required no variances the second time around. And um, so it was a um, maybe see as something uh, um, by right Applica application by right yeah application yeah. by right yeah anything new from the joint land use board on the fire commission recommendation on the minimum height for the overheads uh, there was really no need to to move forward on that uh, as far as I guess changing ordinances or. Uh, the guidelines that uh, are already set in place as far as the fire trucks being able to get underneath the uh, underneath the overhangs. Oh, okay. So how do we respond to the fire commission? Well, the way I read the minutes was that the um, Joint Land Use Board felt that their restrictions were sufficient for the fire equipment. Okay. And no change to the uh, to the ordinances required for those uh, um, parking shelters. There are Correct. In height. Right. So someone will have to write them back and tell them that. I. I may stay corrected, but I think if we check with Kitty, I believe there was supposed to be uh, correspondence that uh, was supposed to take place. But okay. We'll follow up with her. Yes, I believe Michelle did do a report. It's still at the land use board level. So there's been no official correspondence from the land okay. use board back to township committee yet, because mm -hmm. it's still uh, it's pending um, the board's review and approval of Michelle's report before it's okay. submitted back to the uh, township. Okay. Right. Anything else uh, there? Were we going to uh, discuss the uh, telephone pole at the corner of uh, Burlington Avenue? The blinking. It's going to be on exact. That'll be as part of exact session next meeting. 
Okay. Doug Heinholt's going to uh, uh, yeah. come to our next meeting and we'll have uh, kind of a full exec uh, um, schedule at, the, at our next meeting. So, uh, okay. Good question. We'll be dealing with that and several other things. So, Paul's not going anywhere in two weeks. Let's hope not, Richard. Don't say that. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and then they'll send us a bill, right, John? And it's getting closer and closer to my eyeball when I make that turn. All right. Keep an eye out for us, please. <laughs> All right. Well, no executive tonight. All that's uh, at the next meeting. And uh, if there's nothing else, a motion to adjourn. So move. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good night, Good night, everybody. Thank you all. Good night. Good night, Good night everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you, Bev. Good night, nice everybody. Nice vacation, Harry. Take care, Harry. Watch those Have shots. Have a good night. <laughs>